Well, good morning, church. I know I look different. I shaved my beard. Everybody doesn't know who I am. Bennett didn't even know who I was. He looked at me and he, and he thought, who is that? So I told him my name was Jim and he believed me for about six hours. He believed me. <laughs> thought my name was Jim. So I'm Pastor Jim today. I'm kidding. No, I'm joking. But good morning, Trinity Life Church. I want us to do this this morning. I know that we've been doing this, but I just felt in my heart coming up here, I was just praying, you know, Lord, how do you want me to start this? And I feel very strongly that we just need to just begin to ask the Holy Spirit, could we just have a moment of prayer, just a moment of prayer? I mean, Jesus said his house would be the house of prayer. And so could we just pray one more time? And, and with this prayer, I would ask that you be very specific. I want you to pray for yourself, but not only yourself, but pray for those around you. Because I feel strongly that the Lord really wants to move in our hearts today. So if we could just begin to pray that right now. So Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to be here. And God, we thank you that we've come into this place already in worship, already in prayer, already devoted to you. But right now, Lord, I pray for the hearts of your people. I pray for my heart, including, Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would move and work in our hearts in this place. If you've been baptized in the Spirit, I would ask that you just begin to pray in the Spirit right now. Father, I thank you that you set the atmosphere. We don't set it. Lord, you come and move in the place where we are. And Lord, I ask that you shake this place. I ask that you open our hearts in a deep way, Father, through your word. And we just thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning again. The title of this morning's message is The Potter and His Clay. Out of Jeremiah, we'll be speak, I'll be speaking out of Jeremiah 18 and leading into this i just been praying throughout the week, you know, Lord, what do you want to say? It's not as much about what I want to say, but it's about what you want to say. And Pastor, he alluded to this this morning. You know, our nation, there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we could sit for an hour and talk about it. Of course, we're not, but there's a lot of different things that are going on. And when you look at the news and you look at the media, it's really easy and, and I'm thankful for the, the word that Sister Kinsey gave it during worship that just ministered to my soul and my heart that we do not need to forget who God is in these moments. It's so easy to forget and to, to look at the things that we can see. But this on the way here this morning, I was thinking to myself and just praying on the drive here and thinking this, there's no other way we could go up but up from here. Think about that for a second. There's no other way we can go but up. Now, I could have somebody come in front of me and argue with me, but you don't understand, Pastor Reese. With, with this individual or that individual or this idea or this group, no, no, no. There's no other way that we can go but up. Because Jesus Christ is on the throne, because God is still in control, because at some point, God's going to redeem every single one of us, whether it be through our physical death or through the rapture. So the only way we can go is up. And all I know in Jesus's word, he says that when it starts to get worse, that means, hey, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I want to say this to you today. If you've been discouraged by what you see around you, do not let that discourage you because the worse it gets, the more I know in my heart, Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming soon. So what I know now is, is you know what, Lord? It's not about what I can see. It's about what I don't see. And Jesus even said, don't put stock, don't put treasure in the things that you can see and the things that you can feel and the things that you can touch. But what did he say? Put treasure and stock in what? The kingdom of God. And so I encourage you this morning to put your faith in him. Don't worry about what you see in this time. Because God's still in control. Because Jesus is still our Lord, our Savior, our King. And He's still listening to us. He still hears us. He's still moving and working. And that's what we can trust. I just felt strongly in my heart. I wanted to start off by saying that. God is in control. So we look at this scripture now in Jeremiah. And starting in chapter 18, verse 1 through 11. These, this will be the scripture that we read. Jeremiah 18, 1 through 11. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, 
making something at the wheel. And the vessel he made of clay was, was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. We need to understand this. The power and the love of God that he has for each and every one of us in this place and the understanding that he is the God of all creation. He is the God that formed all things, put all things in place, who loves us, who cares for us. I said this to my, my dad the other day. You know, recently God's been working in my dad's life. And about two weeks ago, my dad gave his heart to Jesus in our kitchen. And it was amazing to see that. And my dad's on a journey that he's never been on before. And you know, God's working out some rough spots in his life. And God's doing things in his life. And we're sitting at the kitchen table. And he's telling me about how worried he is about work. And how frustrated he is. And he doesn't know what's going to happen here and what's going to happen there. And I'm just looking at him. And he's just, you know, he's just, I just let him go. You know, he was just needing somebody to talk to. So he's just telling me everything. And I just kind of looked at him. And I just said this to him. I call my dad Papa I've always have I never called him dad I said Papa look at me I said do you think God cares more about you than he does the birds of the air and the animals of the land and he kind of got quiet and he said well, I mean I I don't know I guess yeah I, guess, I said think about it I said, there's only one creation that was made in the image of God, and it's man. There's only one creation that was made in his image. Don't tell me he doesn't love you. Don't tell me that he's not with you. Don't tell me that he doesn't see you or he cares for you. And I look at this story, and, 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 and I look at the word of God in this portion and I see God speaking to Jeremiah. And he says, go and meet. He's basically saying, listen, we're going to go meet at the potter's house. You go there and I'm going to speak to you. And so he shows up. But the thing that just came directly into my heart was just the fact, thinking of this. Why did God choose the potter's house? Why did God choose that location? I mean, God could have sent him anywhere. God could have said, go down by the river, Jeremiah, and I'll speak to you. Or go up to the temple, and I'll speak to you. Or go even to your own house, into your own room, and I'll speak to you. But God, he, he picked that specific place because God wanted to show Jeremiah, and he wants to show us through his word today, that just like that marred clay was messed up, and just like this world is marred and messed up, and just like we are marred and messed up, he is still the one who is in control. He is still the one who can shape, who can change, who can make it. I mean, I love the scripture when it says what it says here. It just blows my mind because it says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. He made it again. He said, oh, oh, this isn't right. This isn't the way I wanted it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it again as it seemed good to the potter to make. So my question 
to you today is, do you think the same God that we've served so far is the same God that can take what we're in right now, this craziness, coronavirus, political division, all of these things in our nation, do you think he's the same God that he that spoke to Jeremiah and said, just like this potter, I could take the marred clay, I could take up the messed up situation, and I can make it again. I could change it again. And not only that, I won't make it marred again, I'll make it into something good. I'll make it into what I want it to be. And so I was looking at this, and the Lord was just speaking to me on this. So he made it again into another vessel. <laughs> I mean, we're the, we serve the God of infinite chances. Amen. We serve the God that, that I, I look at the mercy of God, and, and it amazes me because people will, will they'll almost give God two characters, and they'll say God's one way in the Old Testament, he's different in the New Testament. No, 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 he's the same today, tomorrow, the next day. He's same throughout the entire word of God. And you see the mercy of God all through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, and this mercy is that God loves us so much. He cares for us so much, even if we're in our most broken state, whether it be personally, whether it be as a nation, whether it be as a family, whether it be in your workplace, he says, I want to take that and I want to make it good. That's my desire. I want to take that and I want to make it good. God wants to make you and I into new creations. But he also wants us to understand this. He wants us to know that he wants to renew us each and every day. Do you understand that today? Church, is anybody alive and awake in here? I cannot tell right now. I got blank faces. I got all sorts of stuff. Do we need to have worship again and get everybody all hyped up and then we get, okay, okay, l listen to me today because I feel this so strongly and this is what I feel and I woke up with this in my heart and this has been in my heart this week. Some of you are tired. Some of you are worn out and some of you haven't even experienced God changing and transforming your life. There may be someone in here who has never given their heart to Jesus, but what I want to say, or watching online, but what I want to say is God, just like that marred clay, he wants to take you, he wants to shape you, and he wants to make you into what he desires to see. And not only that, when you get marred up, as you walk out the faith, and you get tired, he wants to come in, and he wants to renew you. He wants to renew you. And I believe God wants to renew you in this place today. He wants to renew you in your spirit. He wants to move in your heart. So how does God take us marred, ruined clay, in a sense, and make us new? Well, first thing, we have to know that God, the God that we serve, he's capable to do anything. These worship songs lined up with the message. We serve the God of all possibilities. Nothing is impossible with our God. When they started singing that, I started smiling. I was laughing to myself. I was going, oh my goodness. They don't even know. We didn't talk. You know, I hope, I hope y'all really know that. Unless we, you know, as a minister and pastor included, unless we ask the, con the, the worship team, hey, could you sing this specific song? We don't say anything. We don't bring up our message to them. So, but somehow God always lines it up in such a way. And so we serve a God of all possibilities, capable of anything that he desires and wishes. He's the God of the universe. He's created all things by his hands. All things that we see and know have been made. And by his hands, he's given all men and women, women the opportunity of life on this earth. But the thing is, the quality and the outcome of our lives, he leaves up to us. You understand that? God leaves the quality and the outcome of your life up to you. Just like he did with Adam and Eve at the beginning. He left the choice up to them. They could have chosen what they wanted to do. And the start for us in understanding that we're like ruined clay is what ruins us. What ruined us from the beginning was sin. And we know this because from the beginning, sin dwelled within the heart of human beings after, after the fall of man. After Adam and Eve sinned against the Lord, they committed you know, disobedience to him. They did not obey him. That brought forth the sin that we all face and deal with and, and lives and dwells in our world. But this is the thing that I was thinking about. Was this what God really intended to do? 
You think God's intent from the beginning, when he formed the heavens and the earth, when we go through the first seven days of creation, do you think his intent from the beginning was to have man fall? Do you think his intent from the beginning was have to, was to have all the chaos and the problems? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Now, God knew what was going to happen, of course. But remember what I said earlier, the choice he left up to was to man. He left the choice up to Adam. He left the choice up to Eve. He left the choice up to them. But we have to understand that, no, if we look at the scriptures, we see that from the start, God did not desire for us to be held in identity with sin. That was never his desire. His desire from the beginning was for us as Christians and really as man itself, he desired for us to walk in relationship and blessing with him. The original identity of man and desire from the heart of God were, was for us to be perfect creation. Perfect creation. That was the beginning. I mean, think about it. They knew no shame. They didn't know what sin was. They didn't know what evilness was. They didn't know what wickedness was. So from the beginning, we need to understand that God's desire for you and I in our hearts is for us to be brought back to that place. That's what he wants. He says, I know you got messed up, but listen, I'm the good, good potter and you're my clay and I'm gonna shape you and make you and turn you into what I've always desired for you to be. You see, we can't walk around thinking that we're still the mired clay. We have to understand that we're the new creation and that God has formed us and shaped us and made us into who he desires for us to be. We can't hold on to that old identity, that old understanding. We have to understand that God desires and intends for us to walk in that relationship with him. That's what he always wanted. And I think of Adam. It said that Adam would walk with God. Adam would walk with God. He would walk with God in the morning, in the evening. God would call for him, and God would long for him to come and be with him. I mean, think about this. This is what God wants for you and I. He desires that relationship. But because, of course, of the disobedience that man part, you know, partook in, and, and God gave them that choice, we are where we are today. But what I love is God didn't stop there. God didn't stop looking for a way. He didn't stop going ahead and making the way. And we see here in Romans, I'm going to read you a scripture in Romans chapter 5. We see how the Holy Spirit writes through Paul. And we see how God shows us his love and he makes a way. And he being what? The great potter, the great craftsman that he is, shapes and makes a way for all of us to be made new. And it says this in Romans chapter 5 verse 12. It says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world. And death through sin. And thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense... Many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounds to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through one man, much more those who receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So what we see here is this. God sees us in our broken state. He knows where we were. He knows who we used to be. But he says, listen, that's okay. I have a way. I'm going to shape and make you into the person I desire you to be. But that starts with us making a choice. And I know many of you, if I said, who of you, have, you know, in this room have given your heart to Jesus, I'm sure everyone in this room, from what I could see, would say yes. 
But my question is this, don't just give your heart to Jesus. A really statement is this, don't just give your heart to Jesus five years ago, ten years ago. Give your heart to Jesus every day, every moment, every second, every minute, no matter what the political statement looks like or the climate, no matter how bad it is, no matter how difficult it is, give your heart to Jesus every single day because the fact is, is we serve a God that just doesn't want to make us new, but he wants to renew us each and every day and strengthen us each and every day. I know so many Christians that just, they bank on what happened five years ago and they're not allowing God to do something new in them. And God each and every day wants to make us new. He wants to make us more and more and more like him. I think of the scripture in Colossians, being rooted and built up in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Well, this is what I know. Roots don't die, and they don't stop going deeper. And they don't stop building. So if, if the roots keep growing, they're going to keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. And what that means is as Christians, God is calling us to go deeper and deeper and deeper with him more and more and more, no matter what we can see. Because faith is not about what we see. You love a God and you love Jesus that you've never seen. It's not about what you can see. And so God is desiring for us to go deeper with him. He's desiring for us to understand that he's created this way for us. For all men who've fallen short, who are marred by their sin, to be made new, to be set free from sin's power, to be set free from the world. And he's given us this chance and this opportunity through Jesus Christ when we believe upon him, when we believe in the gospel, when we believe in his death and his burial and his resurrection, when we put our faith and our hope and our love and our devotion in Christ. I'm so thankful I serve a God that when I mess up, he doesn't cast me aside and say, you're worthless. He says, come here, let me fix you. Let me make you new again. Because I got a purpose for you. Just like the potter had a purpose for everything he made. God has a purpose for you. He has a desire for you. God gives us a choice to choose him or deny him. That's just the facts. We have a choice that each of us have to make each and every day. I look back at the main text Chapter 18, starting in verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? I mean, first of all, let's understand something that was going on in Jeremiah's time. If you're not familiar with Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you know, probably had the hardest ministry among any prophet or any minister in my mind, in my heart. Because he preached for 40 years and no, nobody came to the altar call. And let me tell you, he didn't, have some, he didn't have Trinity Life Church standing behind him going, go, Jeremiah, go, keep doing the will of the Lord. He had no one. He was alone. And he preached and he prophesied and he gave warning to a nation that had completely turned their back against God. Israel and Judah, they were divided kingdoms. They had both completely turned their backs against God, were full of immorality, full of idolatry, full of adultery. I mean, the most wicked of the wicked things were going on. And God was calling Jeremiah to speak to that nation. He was calling them to repentance. He was using Jeremiah as a vessel. And what I love is, Jeremiah, you get into chapter 18. This is 18. If you read before chapter 18, I mean, man, I think all of us would have given up. Because when you get up to 18, it's pretty bad. I mean, Jeremiah, he's about done. He's just totally done. He's like, I don't want to keep doing this. This isn't working, God. And God is constantly stirring his heart and saying, no. I mean, at one point, you know, Jeremiah even says, he's in stocks. Think about this. And, and he's in stocks, okay? How would you like to be go uh, right out by the road or out in the town square? Somebody puts you in stocks because you're prophesying the word of the Lord. And he's sitting in the stocks saying, curse the day that I was born. But also in the other side of it, God's burning in him like a fire. His word is like a fire in his bones, he was preaching to a world that we're living in. He was preaching to a world that we're living in. He was preaching in a world that didn't believe in God, that didn't put God first. 
And when I look at our spiritual climate, it, it resembles what Jeremiah lived and walked in very, very well. It's pretty parallel. And God's saying to him, I love this, God's saying to him, Jeremiah, just like that clay, you don't think I could take all of this and fix it? You don't think I could take all of this and move and work in it? And so I say to the Christians in this place and watching online, do not, do not put your your faith in thinking that God couldn't move and work in what we're living in. Do not put your, put your thinking in, oh, well, it's just too late. It's just too late. No, 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 no. It's not too late. It's not too late because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is on the throne. He's still there. And his power and his Holy Spirit can still move and work. And he can still touch and change lives. Because I'm going to say this. Somebody could have said that for me. Somebody could have said it was too late. It's too late for Reese. He loves the world too much. He's addicted to too many sinful things. It's too late for him. But you know what God was doing? God was waiting and he was moving moving in the most opportune time to reach down and to transform me and in my life. God stepped in in a moment in my life when I thought I, I, I couldn't get out of it. I'm done. It's my life's over. I was addicted to drugs. I was addicted to pornography. I was addicted to immorality. I was addicted to all sorts of things. And I hear a voice say, come to a church. You see, God didn't see me as the the broken piece of clay that I could have been. He saw me as what he wanted to transform me into. And for some of you today, that's what he wants to do. He wants to transform your life. He wants to make you new. He goes on to say this. He says, O house of Israel, the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent the disaster. How do we advert the wrath of God in our lives? And it simply is this, we turn to Jesus Christ. How will this nation be transformed again? Well, it's going to be through the church of Jesus Christ standing up and preaching the gospel. No matter what, no matter if they put us in the stocks, we're going to keep preaching the gospel. No matter if they hate us, no matter what it may be, we're going to keep preaching the gospel. Why? Because that is what's going to advert the disaster that could come upon anyone. And I say that to anyone in this room today, if you, and those watching online, if you have not given your heart to Jesus, listen, I'm just, I'm speaking truth. If you don't give your heart to Jesus, there's only disaster to come. You have to repent. You have to turn back. And this nation has to repent. This nation has to turn back. We have to turn back to the Lord. We cannot continue to think that that God is going to bless our nation when we are doing and living in what we are living in. Because this is what I know. Jeremiah was a righteous man. We say, God won't do that. God, God won't do that because there's so many Christians there and they love Jesus. Well, Jeremiah loved Jesus. Jeremiah loved Yahweh. Jeremiah gave all his whole life to him. And yet he was living in it and it was going to happen. No matter how much he pleaded, he would say, God, please don't, don't, don't bring, I'm paraphrasing, but he would constantly, I mean, you read through the book of Jeremiah, all 52 chapters, and you will see these moments where Jeremiah is pleading with God, please, God, please don't bring the destruction. Please don't bring your wrath. Please don't send the Babylonians to come and ravage us. And God's saying, until they repent, if they will just repent, I'll take my disaster away. And so that's what I say to our nation today. And and we have to preach this message and believe repent 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 we have to repent our nation has to repent God makes it clear he makes it clear to us he makes it clear to us in the book of Jeremiah he makes it clear to us through Jesus Christ and the gospel today he makes it clear listen to this we know this verse John 3 16 but I'm going to read the verses after as well it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Man, we will put our money on that verse, but listen to this one. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Why do we as the church only preach the first part? 
Why don't we be real with people? Yes, for God so loves this world, but God doesn't love wickedness. God doesn't love unrighteousness. God doesn't like, he doesn't love sexual immorality. He doesn't love the things of this world, sinful living. You will never find God's blessing in any of that. We as the church, we have to draw a line in the sand. We have to stop worrying about being politically correct and hurting someone's feelings. I understand. I'm not, I, I may not be speaking to all Republican or all Democratic people in here, but what I'm speaking to is people. I'm speaking to people who have souls, who have spirits, who have a destination when they leave this life. And the reality is this, church. The reality is that if we don't give our hearts to Jesus... And give our lives to Jesus. If we deny him, we're already condemned. Some people may call that hate speech. I don't. I call that love. You know, I preach on Wednesday night to our youth students about loving our enemies. I said, did you know God wants us to love our enemies? And I preached that in Matthew chapter 5. And when we were in this room... And I have leaders who can attest the Holy Spirit was moving in this room so powerfully. And explaining to these students, you know why God calls us to love our enemies? You know why God is calling us to reach this world? And and some people just they just say it's a lost cause. I'm, I'm serious. I've heard this from Christians. Oh, well, that democratic person, you know, they're just they're demon possessed. Well, let's cast the demons out of them, set them free in the name of Jesus. Come on, man. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that instead? Why, why don't we do that? Why don't we preach the gospel to them? If they deny it, well, that's on them. That's not on us anymore. But the fact is, I told them, God calls us to love our enemies. And you know why God calls us to love our enemies? Because before Jesus Christ, each and every one of us, we were enemies to God. We were complete enemies to God. Just like before we were a marred mess of clay that had no purpose, God said, through Christ, I'm going to make you new. And God can transform this nation. This isn't the end. I'm hearing people saying it's the end, like it's the end of the world, man. They're like, oh, man, everything's going to change. No, not if we seek the heart of God. Not if we stand firm in our faith. It may get difficult, but guess what? That's okay, because I know the God of heaven's armies is on my side. I know that he's going to take care of me. I know that he's going to lead me. I know that he's going to provide for me even in the most difficult situations. Jesus speaks clearly in his word that he desires for us all to be made new. He desires for us all to be set free. He desires for us all to have a choice in faith and given to him to submit to God. But like I said earlier, God doesn't want to stop there. He desires for us to not just be made new, but to be renewed. And I want to say this to the house of God here today. Have you been renewed in the Lord lately? Because we will play it off like we have. We will make people think everything is perfect. And on the inside, we are as lonely and as broken as the world that we're speaking to. You see, the reality is this. God doesn't desire for us to walk in that way. He desires for us to be renewed each and every day. He desires for the Holy Spirit to renew us and strengthen us. I explained this to my dad. I said, Dad, I said, listen, if you didn't eat for a week, what would happen to you? And he kind of laughed. He said, well, I would get really tired and I wouldn't have any strength. I'd probably lose even, in, you know, a bunch of weight. Because I, I said, okay. I said, if a Christian doesn't seek the renewing of the Holy Spirit every day, what happens to them? And he kind of started to think about it. He had never thought about that. I said, if the Christian doesn't let the word of God renew them, if the Christian doesn't let the prayer time renew them, if the worship and the times of going into praise with God, if he doesn't allow that to renew them or she doesn't allow that to renew them, what do they do? And my dad finally caught on and he goes, they die. I said, that's exactly right, dad. I said, we have to continually be renewing ourselves through the word of God. So my question today to you is, have you been renewing yourself daily each and every day? Because if we're going to walk and we're going to preach and we're going to be who God calls us to be in this time, because I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not going to put my head down in this season. I do not care who the president is because this is what I know. The president, whoever it may be, he can't do what my God can do. He's man. He's man. Now, I will honor and submit under that authority based off of the word of God. 
I will not rebel against the, because God called, and, and I say that to the church today. God doesn't call us to go burn down buildings and rebel. And, and, and what did I just say a few minutes ago? God calls us to love what? Our enemies. He calls us to pray for those who are against us. He calls us to love those who hate us and persecute us. So who are we called to be in this season? We're called to be the church. And we're called to walk in that. But God wants to renew us through the Holy Spirit. Listen to this verse in 2 Corinthians. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. This is Paul. Even though our outward man is perishing, even though this world itself, not just us and our feeble human bodies, but this world that we see and we know, it's perishing. Yet the inward man is what? Being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is just but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God is desiring to work in us and renew us each and every day. We have to choose. This, again, is another choice. This just doesn't happen instantaneously. That's true. I, I, you know, God can do things instantaneously. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is a lot of times, things that we have to do, we have to walk with the Lord in them. That's right. And as we walk out our faith in fear and trembling, walk out, walking out our faith and our salvation, I feel in my heart that's where many of you may be, may be at today. And we need a fresh renewing of God's Holy Spirit in our lives. We need God to touch us and refresh us. And we need him to strengthen us. We need him to give us what we need in this season. And like I said, we see what's going on. We see what we're facing in our country and even in our own lives. There may be some of you in here facing something that you've never shared with someone. But God knows what that is. And even though it may be overwhelming and difficult, we serve Jesus and his words. He says that he gives us the Holy Spirit, not just to bring us into a place of repentance, but he gives us the Holy Spirit to bring us into a place of transformation that happens each and every day. So that by God's power, we are made new each and every day with his presence and spirit being in our lives. Look at Titus chapter 3. I had my dad do a whole Bible study on Titus. It's not a big book. You know what he told me? He said, son, you need to preach that to the people. They need to hear that. My dad was getting all into it. But look at Titus. Chapter 3, verses 1 through it says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil to no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived. We were that marred clay, right? We were all messed up. We were serving all the various lusts and pleasures. We were living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. So God, in our brokenness, scoops us up. He makes us new, but then he wants to keep us. He wants to keep us that way. If you've ever watched somebody make a clay pot, it's pretty amazing. You know, it's pretty amazing how they do it. Because it takes some skill. It takes some understanding. When they put it on the wheel and they begin to manipulate that clay and they begin to shape it into what they want to shape it to. It's funny because I've watched videos of it before and, and, and even the best clay makers, they'll mess up. They'll mess up. But it's so funny. Even in the mess up, they, they don't get frustrated and you know throw the thing away. And, ah! No, they just take it and go, oh, it's okay, I can fix it. And they fix it. And they fix it each and every time. You see, God wants to do that same thing. Like I said, he wants to do that same thing in you. He wants each and every day to renew you so that you can be who he's calling you to be for this world. It says in verse 6, continue, it says, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ. So you've come to Jesus. And if you haven't, come to Jesus today. And give your life to Jesus because he just doesn't want to change you for this moment. He wants to change you in every moment. And then what does Jesus do? He pours out the Holy Spirit. We look at this verse 
And I was speaking to pastor on this this week in in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. We know these verses. Some of you have heard these verses. But it says, on the last day, and this is Jesus speaking, he says, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood. And this is what I love. It says he cried out. He cried out. It wasn't like Jesus kind of was like in the corner and was like, all right, everybody, please hear what I have to say. He's kind of quiet. I mean, he wanted people to hear this because this is what Jesus knows. And this is what we need to know, that we cannot make it in this life without him. And he understands that if we're going to walk and be the church, we need the Holy Spirit each and every day moving in our lives. He cries out and he says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, this is what I know. A river doesn't stop. A river doesn't stop. A river continuously flows. You go drive to the Mississippi River, it's not at a standstill. I'm going to tell you right now, it's moving. It's moving. And just like the Holy Spirit, he's moving. And he's wanting to flow and move through your life each and every day. And when he does that, what he does is he renews you each and every day by doing that. And that's through his word, that's through prayer, that's through personal time with Jesus. We need that more than ever. We need the Holy Spirit's presence in our life. We need more of him in our life. I want you to listen to this definition. This is the definition of renew. To make like new. To restore to freshness to restore with vigor or to perfection as we renew our strength, to be made like new, to be made like new. So when we're going to Jesus each and every day, he's making us new each and every day through the power of the Holy Spirit. He's making you new. And some of you, like I said, you're tired. You're tired. You've been looking at all the things that are in front of you and you've gotten tired. And now you need the Holy Spirit to renew you. You need him to renew your strength. You need him to renew your spirit, to renew your mind. Oh, no, I already have that. No, you don't. I'll give you three days, and you don't. (laughs) You ever ever notice when you neglect that? What happens? Everything frustrates you. (sighs) Everything. Everybody makes you mad. Everything in the world looks bigger than it is. The feelings of loneliness and depression set in. I've noticed that in my life. Yesterday, yesterday, I'll be transparent with everyone. Yesterday when I was preparing, I was at home by myself. And this feeling came over me. I knew what it was. This feeling, and I, it, it, felt like, it felt like something was coming against me. And it was while I was preparing this. As I'm preparing to get ready, I just, it, and, and, and it wasn't of God, I knew that. It was just this, this feeling came over me that was just trying to push me away from the Lord. And you know what I did? I walked into the, to the room. I, I put on my Bluetooth speaker, and I put it on Waymaker. I started singing it. I just started singing it. I just started singing. I just started praising the Lord. And guess what happened? The Holy Spirit, he renewed me. He started renewing my heart. And, and, and that feeling, it just went away. It was just gone. It was gone. It wasn't there anymore. And I just sat out, and it was just like, you just keep going. You don't have to worry about anything. And you see, God wants to do that for us. He wants to renew us and strengthen us in that way. So those of you who don't think that you need maybe the baptism of the Holy Spirit or that you need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to understand that we need these things and that these things are blessings from God and that Jesus poured the Spirit out so that we could walk in a greater measure, so that we could walk more and more like who God calls us and desires for us to be. And we have to understand that that's through the Holy Spirit. And if the apostles needed the renewing, Listen, they wouldn't have taught on it if you didn't need it. This is the thing that I get with people. They're like, well, we don't need that. That's not for today. No, no, no. If it's in the word of God, you need it. You need it. Because there's a reason why it's there. And so God put, put this in, the, in these men's hearts to talk about how we need the Holy Spirit and we need the Lord to renew us each and every day. Look at 1 Corinthians 14. 
verses two through four. It says, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So what's Paul saying here? He's talking about speaking in tongues. And he's talking about prof- prophecy. But my point to you is this. When we speak in other tongues, when we speak according to the Holy Spirit's leading and submission to him, and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to renew us through maybe a baptism, a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit or being baptized in the Holy Spirit, what is God doing in those moments? He's edifying us through the Holy Spirit. What does edify mean? It means this, to instruct and to improve, especially in moral and religious knowledge. So when we allow the Holy Spirit to renew us, and when we pray in the Holy Spirit, and we seek God, and we allow the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts, what happens is is God is edifying through the Holy Spirit. We are being edified through him. And God is improving us. How many of you want to be improved? I want to be improved. I don't know about you, but I want to be improved because I know I'm not there yet. I am not there yet. And so I need the Lord to improve me each and every day. And he does that through the Holy Spirit working in our hearts. God improving us through the Holy Spirit in our lives when we are submitting ourselves to him and our desires to him. Just like the potter would be renewing that clay, he makes it greater than it was before. That's the same thing that God wants to do to us. For our nation to be restored, for our lives to be restored, we have to come to a place of repentance. We have to come to a place and we have to surrender to God. We have to repent as a nation. And I believe firmly that starts with the church. Yeah. I believe that we have to be, yeah. we have to be the vocal point. Yes. We have to stand up. Mm-hmm. And just like our world needs to repent, we need to repent. Yeah. We need to turn our hearts to God. We need to live our lives as his people and as his body. Amen. God's plea for Israel and for Judah was to turn back from their wickedness. And I believe that's his plea today for us because I believe just like that marred clay that was representing Israel, that marred clay that represents the United States right now, God can take and he can reshape. And maybe that marred clay that represents a person or a person watching online because your life you know isn't right with God, your life isn't in the correct place with Jesus, he wants to transform and he wants to make new. And God repeatedly spoke to Jeremiah and to the other prophets to speak those words, to turn back, to repent. And what I love is when you look at all those times that God spoke and God always put in there, if they would just do that, I'll restore them. I'll restore them. If you would just do that today, God will restore you. He'll renew your mind. He'll reshape you and make you who he calls you to be. If, we, if I could have this, if I could have the worship team just come and begin to play. Because I want to take these last few minutes. And I would like for us to do this. I would like for us to, be, to allow the Holy Spirit to renew us. And allow him to move in our hearts. And if we have things we need to give to God, if we have things we need to give over to God... We do that now. But also this, I want us to pray for our nation. Because this is what I know. God is desiring for all people to turn back, not just the nation. He's desiring for all people to come to him. He's desiring for them to know him and to have a relationship with him. And I know this as well, that the God that we serve is a God that could take the most messed up thing, the most messed up person, And he could transform them. And he can make them new. So I don't care what you've done. And I don't care that when we look at our nation right now, we look at it in fear and in worry as Christians. No, 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 because God can move. God can move in this. So could we do this? Could we all stand in these last few moments? And we're just going to begin to worship 
And I'm just going to start it off with prayer, but I would just ask this. If you feel compelled and led by the Holy Spirit, please come down and pray. And I'm going to pray that God would renew and refresh us. And if you want to stay there, that's fine. You can stay there. I know we're social distancing and I get all of that. And I understand that. But with every head bowed, every eye closed right now, out of respect for others, if you need God to renew and refresh you today, just lift your hand. If that's you, if you need God to renew and and refresh you, just raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you've been struggling in your walk of faith and you need God to reshape and renew you and strengthen you again, raise your hand. If that's you, anyone, anybody else, thank you. Anyone else, don't hesitate. God wants to do it. God wants to move. He wants to work. Then let's do this. As they begin to sing and as I begin to pray, you begin to ask the Lord to renew your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to renew you right now. Let's begin to pray. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you for every person in this place, Father. I thank you that, Lord, their hearts have been touched by you in this time. That, Father, it's not about me. It's not about any other person, God. It's about you, Jesus. It's about you being who you are and all of your majesty and all your power and all of your glory. Jesus, you want to take us and you want to make us new. And Lord, you saw the hands that went up and you saw those who lifted their hands. And so, Father, I pray right now, those of you who lifted your hands, lift your hands again. Lift them up to the Lord right now. And Father, I ask you right now to renew those who are broken in spirit, to renew those whose hearts, Lord, are wrenched at this time and re-strengthen them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Don't be ashamed because the Holy Spirit edifies you. He strengthens you. He improves you when you speak and when you pray in your heavenly language. Pray in tongues. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Of 
the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence oh, come and sing in Holy Spirit One more time, if there's anybody in this place and you say, I need a fresh touch from the Lord, just lift your hands right now. You need a fresh touch from the Lord. Just lift your hands right now. Father, I thank you right now. And I ask you to touch again, Lord. Touch every heart in this place. If you need special prayer, if you want us to pray for you in some way, you just come down. Come down after service. We'll pray with you. Church, know today that the Lord wants to renew you each and every day. This season that we're in in America, it's not the end. Jesus is in control. He's going to move and work even in this time. So let's keep to our faith. Let's stand firm. Let's stand strong because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that is ours to hold on to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, if you come. Thank you, Pastor Reese. As we conclude this service today, I believe that this text of Scripture actually has a, a national application to it. And as I conclude, I will just pray the points of this sermon that really spoke to my heart. So, Father, today we thank you for this story that you've spoken to us, the potter and the clay. Lord, we think of original intention the original intention for Israel, the clay in the potter's hand, formed. We think of Adam, formed from God's hand, from the clay. We think of original intention. We think of the original intention that you have for America. Lord, you're a good God. You're a blessing God. You wanted to form something beautiful, something beautiful out of Adam, something beautiful out of Israel, something beautiful out of America, and even in our own personal lives and our families, something beautiful. Lord, that's your original intention. But yet it said that it was marred in your hands. That tells us that we do have a choice. Adam had a choice. Israel had a choice. America has a choice. We have a choice in our personal lives. And Lord, we, we realize that sin affected Adam. Sin affected Israel. Sin affecting our nation. Sin affects our personal lives. It brings calamity. We cannot sin without, with, without impunity, with impunity. We cannot sin with impunity. Adam could not, Israel could not, America not, cannot, we cannot. But Lord, may we take this away today that you desire to remake. You desire to remake. You sent your son Jesus to come among Adam's fallen race, of which we're all a part of. You came among us to redeem us. And Lord, you can help our nation. You can help each and every person with your mercy and grace. So today, as we leave this place, we take out the message of hope to our nation. We take the message of hope to our friends and families that Jesus can redeem our lives and make it something beautiful again in the hands of the Lord. Lord, and may our church be about redemption. 
And so, Lord, may the grace of our God be with each of us, Father. May the love of God, may the communion of the Holy Spirit, the love of Christ and his grace be with us all. And everyone said, Amen. I love each of you. God bless you today. Thank you, Pastor Aaron, for the, or Pastor Reese, for the message today.